On December 20, 1943, a stream of planes flew over the North Sea into Germany. Their mission was to strike a German factory in the town of Bremen. The planes were part of the 379th Bomb Group and their forces consisted of 21 B-17 Flying Fortresses, which carried the 500-pound bombs destined for Germany and an escort of P-47 Thunderbolts prepared to intercept any enemy planes. Ye Old Pub was among the bombers flying that day, commanded by Charles Brown from Western West Virginia. He was only 21 years old, and it was his first combat mission as a commander. As the bombers closed in on the city of Bremen, slicing through the frigid air at an altitude of approximately 27,000 feet, the biting cold of negative 60 degrees clawed at their metal frames. Suddenly, the tranquil sky erupted into chaos as flak erupted from below, bursting like angry fireworks. Before the bombers could unleash their deadly payload, disaster struck. A barrage of shrapnel tore through the front of Ye Old Pub, shattering the plexiglass nose of the aircraft. A second explosion rocked the wing, sending shockwaves through the fuselage, crippling one engine and mauling another. The once formidable B-17F now faltered, its wings trembling against the onslaught as it struggled to maintain altitude. Around them, comrades faltered, their silhouettes plummeting earthward amidst the chaos of battle. The 389th Bomb Group quickly dropped its payload and each plane began to turn around. Commander Charles Brown was able to keep his plane in the air, but only just. His plane was only flying with two working engines and was much less aerodynamic after the anti-air impacts. Ye Old Pub lagged behind the majority of his flight group and before long her 10-man crew began to see the silhouettes of unfamiliar planes on the horizon, German fighters coming to finish off the straggler. As the swarm of German fighters closed in, the harrowing toll of the battle became glaringly evident aboard the bomber. Out of the 11 defensive guns that once bristled with firepower, only three remained operational. The others lay frozen or shattered by enemy fire. With merciless precision, the enemy fighters unleashed their onslaught. A third engine groaned under the assault, succumbing to damage alongside the bomber's oxygen, hydraulics and electrical systems. Amidst the chaos, Brown felt the searing sting of a bullet fragment tearing into his shoulder. He didn't get the worst of the barrage though, as his tail gunner was killed by the same passing fighter. The loss of the plane's rudder further compounded their plight, making the plane much harder to control. Desperation gripped the crew as they attempted to radio out for help, only to be met with silence. The radio too had succumbed to the ravages of war. Charles fought to keep the plane in the air while tipping to the left, but Ye Older Pub begins to spin out of control. Charles's vision faded as the plane spiraled. Miraculously, he was able to regain control of the bomber at just a few thousand feet above the ground. With only one engine left, the crew of the bomber weigh their options. They could abandon the plane, jump out and be taken as prisoners of war, or they could try and escape back to England in their heavily damaged bomber. They all decided to go for the latter, as with many of their men wounded, they saw it as the only choice. As the aircraft limped its way homeward towards England, Charles stole a glance out of his right window, only to be jolted by the sight of a German BF-109 flying in close formation on their wing. Panic clenched at his heart. They were defenseless, stripped of any effective means to retaliate against this airborne threat. But then, to Charles' astonishment, a gesture of unexpected humanity unfolded before his eyes. The Luftwaffe pilot, instead of unleashing destruction, offered a wave and a solemn salute. In that fleeting moment, amidst the chaos of war, a glimmer of shared humanity pierced through the clouds of conflict. This was no ordinary pilot. The BF-109 was flown by Franz Stiegler, a German ace fighter pilot who had just shot down two B-17s the day before. If he shot down one of the American bombers, he would be eligible for the Knight's Cross, one of the highest awards in Germany. He had taken off from Jever Airfield that day as Brown's bomber flew by overhead and had left with every intention of shooting an enemy plane down. When Stigler approached Ye Old Pub, he was confused as to why they were not firing at him. He stayed his trigger finger, 
and he decided to get closer to the bomber. As he did, he noticed the considerable damage that the B-17 had taken, and he was amazed that the bomber was still in the air, with only one wheezing engine working. Stigler decided that there was no honor in shooting down Charles Brown's defenseless plane, and in a remarkable act, he pulled up alongside the enemy plane and saluted the pilot. Franz Stigler stayed close to the American plane's wing. He hoped that German AA guns would recognize his plane from below and wouldn't be able to fire on the bomber without putting his fighter in danger. Only when the bomber was over the ocean did Franz pull away and fly back to Germany. Ye old pub landed in England and debriefed their command as to what had happened, enemy savior included. At the time, the Allies swept the story under the rug as a story of a German pilot saving Americans would hurt the image of the war. France also didn't talk about the situation at that time. He landed safely and kept his mouth shut about the whole situation. He could have been court-martialed and killed if the German command had found out what he had done. After the war, however, the story got out and served as a heartfelt story to share about a terrible war. Stigler moved to Canada and became a successful businessman, and Brown became an inventor in Florida. The two met on several occasions and became great friends until their deaths in 2008, just a few months apart. If you enjoy heartfelt stories of war, check out our video on first-hand accounts of the World War I Christmas Truce. Liking the video and subscribing helps us grow tremendously, and if you have any comments, please leave them below. We always read and respond to all of them. Thanks for watching, and we hope to have you back soon.